Good day folks, this is Greg Judy at Green Pastures Farm. Today the topic is parasitic wasp. Um, we've actually got uh, some wasps that we brought in and you can see the little guys, they're actually starting to hatch in there and that's when you actually turn them loose. Um, I got uh, 80,000, there's, there's eight bags or 10,000 of these little parasitic wasps. And what they do is they, they're actually in those little black larvae deals that's okay connor you can go ahead and start not follow you around here's one we've already put it in so what we're doing is open up the cow pat we're dumping just a little bit in uh of that wasp and ben's over there on that section and isaac's over there doing it and what we do is we fought we're following the cow herd so this is our first application and i get a shipment of eighty thousand every week through the summer and uh, so we I'm about a month late, but it's been so cold that I don't think they would have even done much. We don't have any flies yet to speak of. I mean, there's a few, but we're going to hit 84 degrees, and uh, it's just a matter of time. And uh, <clears throat> I hate flies. We do have the tree swallow program, and they, they're eating 8,000 flies a day. But, you know, by July and August, we still have more flies than I like. And uh, even though we're moving our cows a lot... Uh, twice a day trying to keep ahead of the fly population This is just a trial. I'm gonna tr I'm not even gonna tell you where I got them because I'm gonna see if they work first I'm, I don't want people going out here and spending the money on something that I can't Stand behind I'm not into that. So I don't want you all wasting your money on something that This company's been in business for 30 years So evidently it works it's specifically designed for more like dairy farms where you have one farm and you've got the animals coming in around the barn and then you can turn them out to pasture but i talked to the guy and he said well if you got a, a mob like this and you're moving them there's going to be a lot of cow manure out there and he said just follow them so that's what we're going to do we, we, we're going to follow the bowls with a few packages of them and then the, the cow mob gets the majority of them and in twice this summer i actually get doubled up he sends me a hundred and sixty thousand to really amp up the population but the way it works is these parasitic wasps go in and they actually go after the fly larvae in the in the manure that's that's what they live on and they inject they, they come up to the larvae and they actually inject uh, an egg into that and a baby wasp uh, comes out and the cycle started over again so these things it's a really fast cycle and i've always heard about them i've heard about them for probably 20 years but i've never I've never investigated it, and uh, so I thought, you know, heck, why not? It's it is a very environmentally friendly way of controlling flies. You got wasps out here, and they're little bitty guys. I mean, they're they work at night mainly, so you go out in the daytime, you're probably not going to see them. But uh, they work at night, and we, we're putting it in manure, and we're covering it up, giving them a good inoculation site to, to hatch. And if you just pour it on top of a manure pad, uh, he, he warned me that the birds, the birds can come along and eat a lot of the, the larvae before it ever comes up. You can see there's a little bit there, but it's nothing. Let's get that little bit. There we go. So we're putting it in our pumpkin pie manure pads. And right now uh, we're... Uh, we're moving them onto this lush grass. The, the manure has turned a little bit more runny. Uh, we did try putting out some hay here a while back, and they wouldn't touch it. So we're to the point now you just got to go. And we're going to be moving these cattle here in just a little bit. And uh, they were on here last night for well, just overnight. We, we brought them in here. Isaac, where are we at on our calving now? Uh, <laughs> Almost 55? Yeah, over 50. Yeah, with the two over there. Yeah, 55. 55 calves. Pretty crazy cattle drive. What was it, two days ago? It's Friday, uh, Friday night? So, last night. No, Thursday night. Thursday night. We tried to beat the rain. Yeah. Yeah. With uh, 25 calves under a week old. So, it's, it's pretty crazy. Yeah. We got them all except for two over there, and then we had to go back, and <laughs> we fortunately we found them. Both of them, yeah, we found both of them. Yeah. But uh, there were some anxious moments on that last one. We, we weren't sure where, where it was at, but we finally 
spread out and we found it so it's always a relief when you yes it sucks when you don't know where one is yes it's like a kind of a sinking feeling but when you find them yep it's a pretty good feeling yep well i'm gonna follow y'all down this ridge why don't we go ahead and yeah we'll open that gate down there these cows are ready to go um matter of fact i can take the wheeler down there and suck to them and you all can get around the calves <clears throat> you want to fire that thing up so i don't have to stop well, there's a good looking calf, 142. Man. Pretty. Alright, here we go. So, what we're going to do is we're going to leave the gate open just in case there's a calf laying down out here underneath the cedar tree or something we don't see. And that way the mother can come back and. Uh, gather up her calf after she fills up. We've really got some beautiful calves out here. There's our cleanup crew right there. Those are the vultures now. We're very fortunate that's a red-headed vulture, a turkey, what we call turkey vulture. We don't have the black-headed vultures yet. I hope to goodness we never get them. Uh, those things are just brutal. I saw evidence of what they can do down in North Carolina. I was at a grazing conference here two years ago and a cow had lost a calf. And those darn buzzards, the black-headed, just absolutely harassed that poor cow. She was running back and forth trying to keep him off of her calf. She, you know, she was trying to protect it. It was dead already. The eyes had been plucked out of it. And I'm not sure, you know, they could have plucked it out as it's coming out of the cow. That's how aggressive these things are. Uh, from what I heard, they're coming up out of Mexico. Now we've got them up here in the United States. Boy, look at that calf go. <laughs> That's what that South Pole cow milk will do to them. Look at them. But we're fortunate to just have the turkey buzzers, and we call them our cleanup crew, so they clean up the afterbirth if the cows don't eat it. I would say 70% of the cows eat their afterbirth. Maybe higher than that. It may be 90%. Boy, that milk is doing that calf some good. A little, look at that little bull calf. Woo! Yeah, they know what direction they're going. Oh, there's a pair of Canadian geese over there walking. See them? They're uh, raising a club. She's laying an egg every day over by this pond. And then she'll hatch those eggs. And uh, we'll, we'll have some baby goslins out here on the pasture here pretty soon. And those are wild Canadian geese. Yeah, I know we're a little bit late to get you on mood. And there are calves everywhere. So what we're trying to do now is. Uh, time our rotation so that when we come back around here we're going to be uh, pretty close to the road frontage up there for our grazing school which is May 6th through the 8th and uh, we're hoping to uh, have them close so the people we're going to have a pretty good crowd and we don't want to have to have people walking to the back of the farm to do a pasture walk with the cow herd. so with that I'm going to go ahead and open this that's my Greg Judy handle I, I made many years ago. That's a homemade gate handle. It works really good. You gotta do what you gotta do when you don't have any money, folks. And that's what I did. I didn't have any money, so I made my handles. And uh, just, it works. I still use them today. So I hang that up there. Here they come. This is a little bit of a difficult move as far as the cows see their buddies going this away. And the ones that are on that side of the fence, it's, it's natural for them to walk back up that fence line in the paddock that they're in. Now the smart ones are following the ones in front of them. They're going to come through that gate. That's why I've got the boys back there. I got some, I call them boys. I, sh I need to quit calling them that. They're young men. 
it's just to me I'm an old I'm an old codger and so they're they're a lot younger than I am so they don't mind sometimes I call them boys sometimes I call them young men they know I don't mean anything by it get a lot of bawling right now because you got 55 new babies on the ground and if the new baby's not right by the mama when you open that gate uh, they ball and they'll ball and they'll ball until they smell their calf this is going to be a pretty nice move though i mean as long as we get the cows through here the baby calves can walk underneath that single wire hot wire over there that's a paddock division right here and that wire right there folks is 30 inches off the ground and that's why I get a little bit aggravated. Now, I think somebody said they've changed it. Some of the cost show programs, they used to make you put in two wires for a paddock division. And I think maybe they've changed that. It's just down to one now, which is, a, if they did, that's a great decision. And I got to give them a kudos for that. Because if you put two wires on that, what happens is the baby calf gets shocked. He hits that bottom wire. And then he comes over here and lays down. He may try and get back, but if he gets shocked again and he's just born, he's like, you know, I'm just going to lay over here. And you got the mother on that side of the fence, you got the baby on this side of the fence, and it's, it's a wreck. You don't, you don't want to do that. So don't put two wires on your paddock divisions. It, it just doesn't make any sense. When one high tensile, 180 to 200,000 PSI wire will do the trick. Boy, they're going into some good grass. So we won't be on this paddock until we get uh, another two weeks. This is one of the last paddocks that we grazed with our bull, the bull mob. We had 70, 79 head of bulls in here, I believe it was. And um, this still needs some recovery, but it's going to get two more weeks. And we are in the spring flush right now. This is uh, April 26th, I believe it is. And, I mean, this grass is really starting to crank. They're saying mid-80s by Monday. Uh, we were 27 degrees two nights in a row. We had hard frost. And that, that did slow our grass down a little bit. Oh, it's a beautiful time of year. All the baby calves and the new mothers. And, I mean, they're just prancing around like they're little. <laughs> That's a beautiful heifer right there. Man. 502, you outdid yourself. Golly, that's a beautiful cow. We uh, we had a cow this morning that calved. We, well, we found the calf, and we thought we had the right cow, but we didn't. And we, Isaac and Ben and them, they, that cow's trying to find hers. She's like, well, that's 864. That's the pet cow. <laughs> anyway, we had a cow decided she didn't want to be on the farm anymore this morning. We got her up in the crowd. She won't take the calf. And there's no sense in that. So somebody said the other day they had some heifers that walked away from the calves. What do you do? Well, there's two things you can do. You can work with them. And, you know, if you're hard-headed like I was when I started out, folks, I couldn't have... I couldn't afford to just sell an animal. I didn't only had seven or eight. And so I'd work with them and uh, I would save those calves. I'd finally get the cow. They'd just get wore out messing with me and they'd take the calf. And you can do that. It, it takes some time to do that. Uh, today, if we have one that does that, we had two heifers that did it and uh, we just sold them off. They're, they're already in somebody else's farm. We just sold them. And when you take them to the sale barn, that's what you're selling. You're selling animals. They're not prime animals uh, by any means. They're animals that you're getting rid of. And that cow this morning, whatever her deal is, I don't care. She just told us she didn't want to live here anymore. So she's gone. And if you'll do that um, over time, they will get better. <laughs> because your herd is getting rid of the, the, you might say, the worthless ones. This little calf here got stepped on and I put a splint on his leg and uh, we're going to take that off here in probably about another 7 to 10 days. It's been on there about a week. I just took a Gorilla Tape and a little piece of plastic for support 
and he got stepped on. It was actually going to the side down by his ankle, and he's getting around real good, but we're going to catch him here about seven to ten days and, and, and at least re-bandage it. Just make sure there's no sore there, and I think he's going to be fine. But, you know, people ask me, well, you know, you're pretty hardcore. You just sold those heifers that didn't take their calf. I'm not hardcore. I'm just common sense, folks. This is a business. And you can't be married to your cows. You give them a good life. You move them every day, twice a day. Good mineral salt, good water supply, excellent forage, and they do that to you. You've got to sell them. You've got to sell them. They've just got to go. And if you keep them... Well, you will reap the rewards of that because we had a cow. Um, it's a kind of a sad story, actually. She's going to be sold, but she did it to us again this year. And uh, it was a cow that had a really good calf and from last year, and she kind of butted a little bit. We got her up, and she took it. She did the same thing this year. She butted it, and then she took it. But she butted it maybe another half a day longer and i'm like honey two strikes you're done you're just absolutely done and she raises a super super high quality calf but she butts it you know and she just has no maternal instinct at all when it's born well if that calf goes out here and hides and that cow hasn't got enough maternal instinct to ball to it and care about it and you don't, you're not on your toes that's a dead calf because you're going to leave it okay so you just can't afford to keep a calf or a cow like that. And so she's going to raise this one. She's got another beautiful calf on her this year, but we're going to sell her and we're going to sell the calf. So, and our calf from last year, we banded him. He was a really nice bull and uh, we banded him. Because I don't want to sell a bull to somebody that came out of a cow that doesn't do the best job when they calf. Okay. Just the way, I, just the way it is. Here. I'm not saying you don't have to do it that way. That's just what I do, and it cuts down on some of the problems. I mean, we, you're still going to have some problems, and that's just the way it is. I mean, in the livestock business, like my old friend from Africa, he's very blunt, but he's straightforward. He doesn't mash around. He doesn't beat around the bush. Ian Mitchell Ennis, and he said, "Greg, when you're in the livestock business, you're also in the dying business. Sometimes they." die and it's nobody's fault they just die and so yeah you got to keep that in mind but uh i'm looking at all these manure paths i'm going by man this one i bet you it's got some worms in it oh my gosh look at that look at the worms folks do you think we have biology here on judy farms look at that oh my gosh Folks, this is a farm that when we leased it, it was solid Kentucky 31 and broom sedge. There wasn't any biology on this farm because it was continuously grazed. There wasn't any litter bait. But look at what the cows are on today. I mean, it's just some of this grass is going to boot. The, the orchard grass is. The fescue is not quite there. I did see some bluegrass seed heads yesterday. So the bluegrass is starting to get close to seeding. And uh, <laughs> still got a lot of mamas bawling. Ben's bringing the sea salt and the vinegar. We're, we're using whole whole apple cider vinegar and mixing it with that sea salt. It's got all the different minerals in it. And uh, we're going to be starting a trial here pretty soon using the uh, the Redmonds with the garlic powder in it. We're going to keep you all up to date on that. I'm excited about that. Sure does make my shop smell good. I love garlic. So we're going to be trying that. But uh, anyway, the, the cattle are happy this morning. They're on some very lush grass. And uh, you all know that cows can only take about 40,000 bites a day. And if a cow gets a good mouthful, she can fill up with those 40,000. If she doesn't get a good mouthful, once she takes 40,000, that's it. So she may be hungry she's still she's done she's done but the bigger the mouthful of grass they can take with each chomp uh, the quicker they fill up 
and then they can lay down and ruminate, and then they can do it again. Boy, 208, you got a beautiful calf. Now, see, that was a brand new calf we made the cattle drive with on Thursday. And that little thing got so tired halfway through the cattle drive, and we were going through some hills and mountains. I put that little heifer on the four wheeler with me the last half of the cattle drive. But, well, if you went over there now and tried to catch that heifer, you better, you better have your Wheaties because she's going to eat your lunch. She's had a couple days of good cow's milk in her now. It's just amazing. Boy, this is beautiful. My goodness. My favorite time of the year. And there's a good little mama. Got some horns. That's not a pure south pole. That's a three-quarter cross. Boy, she's doing a good job with her calf. Look at that. Licking his little butt while he's sucking. I love good mothers. Look how clean that calf is. I mean, that calf is clean as a button. His little butt's clean. It's because she licks it. If it's got any manure on it, she licks it off of there. He's getting that good colostrum rich milk off of this beautiful grass. Folks, this is the way it's meant to be. There's my tree swallow sitting right there on top of that post doing the tweeting noise this morning. I love the tree swallows. They're going after our flies. And now we're going to have parasitic wasp also going after our flies. Yep. I'm going to sign off here, folks. It's a beautiful morning, and you all have a great weekend. And uh, we're going to see you all down the road. Hit that subscribe button on the way out, and uh, also hit that like button. And uh, we'll see you next time.